Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on with exercise 2a. We're on page 42 of the book Fundamental Applied Mathematics. And the question we're going to do is number 9. And I think it's about now that we're starting to see slightly more difficult questions. So the question reads, A train slows down from 70 to 50 meters per second over an 8 second time interval. Find the deceleration and the distance covered. If the train continues to decelerate at the same uniform rate, how much further will it travel before it comes to rest? Now, when I say it's more difficult, I mean that it is it's just two parts, and we've done both parts already. So, we begin with drawing our diagram. We draw a speed time diagram. Time on the, uh, the x-axis, units of seconds, and speed of units meters per second, like that. The train begins at 70 meters per second. And after over an 8 second time interval it slows to 50 seconds, 50 meters per second. So we'll call this 8, like that, and we'll say there at time 0, at t is equal to 0, speed is equal to 70, t is equal to 8, speed is equal to 50. Because we know that deceleration is uniform, you can join with a straight line the two of those. That's the first thing. So just, we can complete the triangle and the rectangle here like that. Next, we're, we're, the second part of the question, you'll be asked how long will it take before it goes to rest. So we'll assume that at time t is equal to t, the train has come to rest. So how do we solve this? Well, just before we continue, we know, of course, that the total area underneath this curve will give you the total distance. So we'll work without that for the moment, and we'll come back to that to try and, we'll say, prove or to verify what we've done. So as per normal, we start with our UVAS. The final, initial and final speeds, the acceleration, the distance, and the time. So now that the initial speed is 70 meters per second, the final speed is 50. We know it's a deceleration because V1 is greater than V2. So it's decelerating, therefore the sign is negative on, for, the, for the acceleration. So we say we don't know what it is, so we call it, actually, I don't need to call it negative A. I'm going to just call it A, and the reason I'm going to say that is, say if A turns out to be negative 10, for example, well the negative will already be accounted for in the A, and if it turns out to be, I know it's not going to be, but say if it was a positive 10, then when I put in A, it'll, it'll become all positive. So by saying that this is, this is a variable, it can be of any sign, and it can be of any value. So it's, the, the sign of it being plus or minus is already taken into account. The distance we don't know, and we don't know the time. So we need to find what they say the distance and the time. So what formula will we use? What about v is equal to u plus at? We, we, sorry, we do have the time, excuse me. It's the uh, distance and the acceleration we need to find out. So what about v is equal to u plus at? The only variable we don't know in this case is the acceleration, so that'll work. So 50 is equal to 70 plus a times 8. Minus 20 is equal to 8a. And look, there's our negative sign coming out immediately from this. And we have a is equal to minus 20 over 8. a is equal to minus 10 over 4 is equal to minus 5 over 2 meters per second squared. So just check that at the back of the book. In question 9 of 2a, this is 2.5 meters per second. Yeah, that is exactly what we got. So that is correct. Now, just as a matter of interest, what if we'd left that as, as negative a? If we'd left that, if we'd started and say that it was minus a, could we do that? Yes. The answer is, you could say start off this being negative a. But then you would have to say this is, you would have to say that this would be a minus and this would be plus. You know something, I'm not going to speak about the, 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 whether speeds are positive or negative. I said at the beginning of the, we'll say, this lecture series that we're always going to assume speeds are positive. So I suggest to you, assume speeds are positive, and if you're ever trying to find out an acceleration, just leave it as positive a and let the sign come out naturally. If you, le leave it, if you left it at negative a, to be honest, you would get the wrong sign unless you change the, the sign on your speeds. Right, so we always say it's just a 
and the acceleration sign will come out of it naturally. So we know the speed, the deceleration is equal to negative 2.5 meters per second squared. Next we need to find out the distance. What formula will we use? What about s is equal to u plus v over 2 times t? That will work because the only variable we don't know is s. So s is equal to uh, 50 plus 70 which is 120 over 2 times 8 s is equal to 60 times 8 s is equal to 480 meters sorry I know you couldn't see the top of that there I apologize for that so let's just check that at the back of the book 2a question 9 and 480 meters is correct so we'll just say that that is 480 meters per second. Now we're asked to find out what happens if the train continues to decelerate and it de decelerates to we'll say zero, of a lot, a zero speed. So part two U V A S T. We know the the initial speed for section two is the final speed for section one. Okay, the only difference between the two speeds, sorry, the only difference between the two, um, we'll say, parts is the fact that you're splitting it. So obviously if you're going at a certain speed up to, we'll say, this point, then you're moving at the same speed at, uh, at that point, but if, if, you're, if you can splitting up, the, uh, splitting up the, the, the sections like that. Okay, so anyway, we know that the final speed is equal to 50, or the initial speed for this section is equal to 50. If it's coming to rest, the final speed is equal to zero. Um, then we're told, well, of course, the deceleration is going to continue at that because we're talking about uniform uh, linear acceleration. The distance is unknown and the time is also unknown. So we'll literally use the same formula as the last time. What ones we try? Well, well, if we try v is equal to u plus a times t, like that. What unknowns are there? The only unknown in that formula is t, therefore it will work. So we try 0 is equal to 50 uh, minus 2.5 times t. Therefore, minus 50 over 2.5 is equal to minus t. So let's just plug that into our calculator. 50 divided by 2.5 gives an answer of 20. The negative signs will cancel. t is equal to 20 seconds. Is that correct? In actual fact, that wasn't asked for, so we don't have an answer in the back of the book. But we'll, so we'll, we'll continue on. To get the distance, I'm going to use the same formula as last time. S is equal to u plus v over 2 times the time. Equals 50 plus 0 over 2, which is 25 times 20. Equals 25 times 20 is equal to 500. Is it 500 or 5,000? Jeez, my algebra is terrible. 500. So let's check that out. And we see that 500 is correct, which meant that our time is correct. So look, I'm hoping that you're seeing that there's a pattern to these. You start, you, you draw your, your initial diagram. Then you try the, you, you write down what you know, what variables you know from the UVAST formula. Then you check any of your formulae and you see which one has the least number of unknowns. And you work from there. Just because you're trying to get distance, doesn't mean that you don't need to get the value for time. For example, if time was unknown. Now, just, just to, we'll say, uh, to confirm that you can do th things by, uh, by distance, or by, sorry, by area underneath the curve as well, let's just confirm this. So we have, we have three shapes here, a triangle, a rectangle, and another triangle. So, the first triangle, number one, is half the base by the perpendicular height. The base is eight seconds, so that's eight over two, times the height, which is between 50 and 70, which is 20. So that's 10 equals 80. That's for number one. Number two, it's the base by the height, so it's 8 times 50. So it's number two is 8 times 50 is equal to 400. And finally, this triangle here, so we know the time finished was at 20. It finished at 20 seconds additional 
to what uh, it started. So this here was 28. So it's 28, half the base, half 28 times the height, which is equal to 50. This doesn't look like it's going to be correct. So we've half the base, which is, uh, what do we say it was? 20, so that's 10. We'll say, how about that? No, no, I'll go back. It's half the, between, yeah, half 20 times the perpendicular height, which was 50. 10 times 50 is equal to 500. Like that. Now, sorry, excuse me, I was getting confused there for a moment about not, it not working out. Now look, 80 plus 400 is equal to 480. That's that part there, the distance that we got. Because look, it corresponds to adding 1 and 2 together, which is the initial part. And part 3, when you were slowing down to rest, we got an answer of 500 meters. And what did we get when we looked at the areas? We got 500 meters per second. So, thanks for watching. Hope it was useful. Please subscribe to my channel and pass it on to your friends.